Okay, this is chapter 20. This chapter is on extension fields. And just a quick note about this chapter, it's fairly lengthy if you involve or sort of look at all the proofs in it. So I'm going to sort of go through it without most of the proofs. A lot of them are, they're, they're all in the notes, so feel free to look there. Um, I'll make some comments about, maybe try and give some insights with examples about why the proofs are true. But, and, and I definitely talk about what the, the ramifications are there in field theory, but I don't want to spend too much time going through every single detail because I think it's sort of maybe better spent just looking through notes to read. But um, in any case, I will do at least one proof, maybe more, but we'll see as we go. So the idea of an extension field or a field extension is that, um, that if we have a field F that's con contained inside another field E, that things may happen in, in E of X, the larger polynomial ring, that don't happen in the smaller one, right? So the idea is this. This is general. We're gonna we're gonna sort of iron it all out and do some examples. So we'll say if a field F is contained inside a field E that things may happen in E adjoined X, which cannot happen in F adjoined X. So for example, a good example to start with, um, R is contained in C. The real numbers are contained in the complex numbers. The polynomial p of x, which is x squared plus 4, this is in R joined x. And it does not factor. You know, in any meaningful way, like, you know, 1 times x squared plus 4 is not meaningful. But if you go up and say, however, if we look in uh, C adjoined X, it does. Because X squared plus 4, this factors into uh, X minus 2i and X plus 2i. So everything's good. So what we, we want to do is sort of look at this sort of idea a little bit. So I'm going to break this up into a bunch of chunks that I think make sense. So I'm going to call this uh, an extension field with a root part one. And so everything sort of comes out of this. Uh, so first, I just want to give a few official definitions. So the goal of this first section is to sort of do what the title suggests. I'm going to start with a polynomial in, a, in you know, our F adjoined X. And we want to say, can we find a bigger field in which there is a root? Right? So first, we'll look at, at F contained in E. So whenever I write F and E in this chapter, they're always fields. So this is F is the field, F is the bigger field. Right? So first, we'll look at F. Um, a field inside of a field E and a polynomial P of X, which is uh, irreducible over F, and whether it can have a root in E, or maybe a, be a better way of looking at it is to whether E can be chosen. So um, p of x has a root. So an example is like the one we just had. Um, that x squared plus 4, this is in r adjoined x. This has no root. In other words, it has no root in r. Right, but r is contained in c, and it has roots in c. 
I'll just say has a root in C for now. So the question is, can we do this in general? So first, we need some official definitions because I'm using the term extension field and I haven't really nailed down exactly what this means. So, and I want to be clear about one specific aspect. So we'll say a field E is an extension field of F. Basically, if F is contained in E, and we have this other requirement, and the operations in F are those of E restricted to F. Oh, yeah. So um, the reason for this last comment is that we, we want to disallow certain things like, like for example, uh, disallow or prohibit um, Z7 is contained in R. It is absolutely true that Z7 and, and R are both fields. Right? Both of these guys, this is a field, this is a field. So it's a subset, absolutely. And so we have to sort of say like, well, like, is it a subfield? And the answer is, well, not really because the operations in z7 are you know addition or let's say are done mod 7 so here the operations are mod 7 and here they're just regular operation in other words not mod 7. so in a situation like this i don't want this to be considered i wouldn't want to consider r to be an extension field of z7 so that's gone so Third note, or third thing before we give the big theorem, is the term extension field is used somewhat liberally. So what I mean by that is the following. Uh, the term extension field, this is used even when um, F is not necessarily a subset of E but F is isomorphic to, uh, let's say, a subring of E. So let me give you an example to clarify that. So for example, consider, say, the fields R, real numbers, and R adjoined X, mod X squared plus one. So just a reference, this is a um, historical point, but just so that you remember, this guy is a field. So you may want to remind yourself why. I'm not going to dwell into that. Um, but the point is that things in R are real numbers. Things in R, X, mod, the ideal generated by X squared plus one are not real numbers, right? So things in, let's say, elements in this guy over here, These have the form P of X plus the coset X squared plus one. So things in R are not in there. So officially, or even unofficially really, like it's not a subset, right? R is absolutely not a subset of R adjoined X mod that ideal because real numbers are not cosets. However, we could say, well, why don't we just look at the polynomials or the cosets of the form alpha plus X squared plus one, right? So cosets in this field Say which have the form, uh, let's say alpha plus the coset. Let's make this a set with alpha and R. These behave like the real numbers. Meaning uh, isomorphic to. 
So in this sense, we would say that um, that r join x uh, x squared plus one is an extension field. of R. So here's our big theorem. Sort of the big theorem of the entire chapter, really. Everything else kind of comes out of this, but it's really the one that uh, we want to remember. So this is the fundamental the theorem of field theory, hence the name. So it says the following, it says let F be a field and F of X in F adjoined X be a non-constant polynomial. Then basically there is an extension field of E in which the polynomial has a root. This is an extension field E with F contained in E such that little f of x has a root in E. So basically you can always grow the, the base field, if you like, to pick up a root for the polynomial. So this one I will prove because it's fundamental, it's a good one to do. And then we'll do some examples and, um, and um, well, actually, let me, before I, I do a proof, let me sort of give you some insight as to why this is interesting. So in certain cases, this may be obvious. For example, um, so for example, um, like, well, like this one from before, like x squared plus four is contained in Rx. And we can grow, we can get a bigger field from R. Like R is contained in C. And x squared plus four has a root in C. So you might say like, well, when could I not do this, right? So look at a, Sort of a much simpler example, or a much more complicated example, much different. So the um, say the polynomial x squared plus three. This is in Z three adjoin x. This is irreducible over Z three. It has no roots in Z three. Right? course it's easy to check like that the only roots could be 0 1 or 2 those are the only numbers and if you try you plug in 0 you get 3 um, and that makes me realize hold on I did this wrong I missed I put the one point over there it's real plus 1 so uh, if you plug in 0 you get 1 if you plug in 1 you get 2 and if you plug in 2 you get 5 which is the same as 2 and so I have no roots right so then you know Say so like, well, can I can I get a bigger field in which there's a root? But it's not even clear what a bigger field looks like, right? So is there a field uh, E with Z three contained in E and with a root in E? So you can't use, for example, C like it's not an extension field. Because Z3 is not contained in C as an extension field. Right, so you can't just automatically say, like, well, let's go to the complex numbers because everything has roots in the complex numbers. Like, yes, but that's not what's going on. Like, I have a field that I'm starting with, and I have to grow that field in, a, in an extension field sense. So 
the theorem says that we can do it anyway. In other words, it says that the answer to this question that we're posing down here is uh, is yes. All right, that's what the theorem is saying. So let's prove the theorem. So here's the proof. So first of all, since f is a field, we know that f adjoined x is a unique factorization domain. This we proved in a previous chapter. Or rather, let me say this, since f is a field, f adjoined x is a unique factorization domain. Now, if that theorem, if you don't remember it, or you don't exactly remember what a unique factorization domain is, it doesn't really matter for now, um, other than you accept that we can factor f into a product of polynomials such that one of them is irreducible. So what we'll do is we'll write f of x as we'll say um, p of x, q of x. Or in our case, p of x is irreducible over f. And q of x is just the, the remaining stuff. All right, so we don't need all the power of UFD, but I have to be able to recognize that I can take the polynomial f of x and I can factor it into p of x, which is irreducible over f, and then all the other crap that's in the factorization. And that's just q. And I'm not overly worried about q for now. p is the thing to focus on, right? So um, again, since from, from, there's a bunch of previous theorems that will come up here. So since p of x is irreducible over f, we know that f adjoined x mod the ideal generated by p of x is a field. Now, the comment I made earlier about how We'll say that a field is a field extension of another field if there's sort of an isomorphism going on here. This applies, right? So we'll say that, um, we'll say comma and is a field extension of F in the sense that, so I'll be sort of a little formal here, but we don't need to be like F is just the collection of things in F. This is a little goofy, but that's right. And this is isomorphic to the set of cosets that have the form alpha plus px, where alpha is in F. And this thing is like really officially a subfield and a subset of F adjoined x. Uh, ideal generator p of x. So in, in this sense, we, we treat f as a subfield of f adjoined x mod the ideal generator by p of x, all the other way around with f adjoined x mod the ideal generator by p of x is an extension field of f. Right? So we have an extension field. So all we need to do is prove our claim that we claim that little f of x as a root in this new field, in this extension field. To see this, I'm going to make a claim. I'm going to claim the root is the coset x plus the ideal generated by p of x. And it shows that's the case. I'm just going to plug it in. Right, so we take f of that thing. Right. Now, f is a polynomial, which means it's composed, comprised of addition and multiplication. Really, addition and powers, but powers are multiplication in this case. So when we do this operation, we get the same thing as if we did f of x plus the ideal generated by p of x. Now, um, f of x factors into p times q. So this is p of x plus the ideal generated by p of x multiplied by q of x plus the ideal generated by p of x. 
this left coset is zero. Well, it's the zero coset. This, it doesn't matter. The point is that the result is zero plus the ideal generated by P of X. And that's the result, QED. So again, we've shown that in this extension field, right here, that we have a root of the polynomial F. And so we've seen that when we plug, this is our root right here. When we plug it into F, we get zero in that field that we're now living in, in that extension field. So let me give you some concrete examples so that we can see. So here's the first example. Um, consider, let's say, actually, let's say I give a polynomial first. Consider f of x is x squared plus 1. This is a polynomial in Q adjoined x. So f itself is irreducible. Over Q, we can move immediately to an extension field. And so the way that I'll write this down, just so that we're completely clear, is that Q is contained in, well, I'm going to use this term really, really loosely. Let me be, let me, let me do this, because I don't want to say, I don't want to, I want to make sure that what I'm writing is clear. The, we can look at the extension field uh, Q adjoined X mod the ideal generated by X squared plus one. Remember, this is the set of all P of X plus X squared plus one, such that P of X is in Q adjoined X. Now, under certain equivalences, and so keep in mind, this is a this is an extension field. Of Q in the sense that that Q. This is sort of a, a rewrite of what I wrote here on the left, but just so we have a concrete idea that Q is the set of rationals, and this is the same as. A set of cosets that look like this, the same as being meaning isomorphic to. And this is a subfield. This is why I wanted to use the subset symbol, but carefully. And in this extension field, Uh, f of x has a root. Let's say has the root x plus the ideal generated by x squared plus 1. And again, we can check this if we want, because if we take f of that, we start to see why this is sort of actually fairly interestingly obvious, right? This is the same as f of x plus x squared plus 1 which is just x squared plus 1 plus the ideal generated by x squared plus 1, which is 0 plus the ideal generated by x squared plus 1. Which makes you sort of realize that, like, well, clearly I can do this process every time as long as the polynomial, you know, if the polynomial is irreducible, then when I do this, I get a field. And that's the thing, right? So keep in mind, it's important to keep in mind that this new thing that we've built before, and now I'm saying it's an extension field, but really appreciate that this thing is a field. It's an honest to goodness field. Let me do a couple more examples. So, second example is uh, consider f of x is x to the fourth plus 8x squared plus 15, also in Q adjoin x. So, um, f of x, this f of x is actually reducible, it reduces. This is equal to x squared plus 3, x squared plus 5. Each of those is irreducible over Q. So in this case, there are two different extension fields. Now 
let's say, let me say it this way because there might be more than two. I don't want to make a claim that there's only two, but let, we'll say thus there are many ways of constructing an extension field of Q in which f of x has a root. So uh, one way would be um, Q adjoined x mod the ideal generated by x squared plus 3. And another way would be Q adjoined x mod the ideal generated by x squared plus 5. Those are different ways. And the last example, I want to do one that's not Q, that's like, like a nice finite field. So consider f of x will be, let's say, um, x cubed plus, actually let me do a slightly, let me do one that's more like the previous one, just because it's more interesting. Um, x to the fifth plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 2. This is in z3 adjoined x. This actually factors. This factors into x squared plus 1 times x cubed plus 2x plus 2. And each is irreducible. This may not be screamingly obvious, that's okay. Over z3, it's a fact, right? So again, there are many ways we can construct an extension field, right? So uh, we have, let me phrase this differently, we have roots in these two extension fields. So one would be this guy, C3 adjoined x mod x squared plus one, and uh, C3 adjoined x mod the ideal joined by x cubed plus two x plus three. Now, fun fact. Um, z3 itself right because we're looking at an extension field of z3 so it's always good to keep a to keep a scale on things right so when we when we say extension field we mean extension field of z3 this guy right this has elements we've done these problems before this thing has elements that look like this So this is an extension field with nine elements, right? Z3 has three elements. So it got a little bit bigger. This guy is expressions of the form like this. So this is an extension field with 27 elements. So neither of these is particularly big, right? These are really small fields, um, but the same thing is happening. We get to have an extension field in which the original polynomial, in this case, f of x has a root, right? So keep this in mind, we can always grow this out. We can always grow the originating field so that the polynomial over that field has a, has a root in the bigger field. So three, I'm gonna call this um, an extension field with a root part two. And so for the next couple of numerical things, uh, not probably not going to prove things, but I'm just going to give examples to sort of um, give evidence to the theorems that are there. And the theorems are proved in the lecture notes, so feel free to look and, and work through all the details. But there's not a lot to be gained by me talking through all the details. They're all almost better, much more carefully followed on paper. But by way of a little intro here. So I just want to reflect back upon what we saw in number two. Right? So the fundamental theorem of field theory states that, just to recap really, really briefly, we can always extend a field to pick up a root. And it's sort of a nice way of thinking about it. Right? But, you know, 
take a look at what we could have done instead, right? And we mentioned this before, and so I want to sort of go back to something that came up before we proved the theorem. So have a, in nice cases, we could have done this anyway. Let me sort of explain what I mean. Right, so like the example was x squared plus 1 in q adjoined x. So the fundamental theorem of field theory says I just go to this bigger extension field. And that does the job. But why not just go to q adjoined i? Like, this is a subfield of the complex numbers. I mean, like, in this, you know, in here, we could say that x squared plus 1 has a root in here. All right, keep in mind, just to remember, this is a set of all a plus b i, such that a and b are rationals. This is also a field. So you might say, like, well, why could I not do this, right? Or maybe a better question is, like, clearly you can do this, right? This absolutely works. And so we might say, like, well, are these the same, right? I mean, like, clearly we can do either. Are they isomorphic? Like, they're clearly different, right? One is a set of cosets. The other is a bunch of complex numbers. So um, formally, they're different things, but perhaps they're the same uh, isomorphically. So it turns out this is the case. Before I prove this, though, I want to give a little bit more notation, and then we'll then I'll give the theorem, and then I'll give one more example. So first, I just want to give a, a sort of a definition. And so I'll give this definition, and I'll uh, explain why we have it. So we'll say, suppose that um, E is an extension field of F, and they have a bunch of things in E. So what we're going to do is we're going to define, say, um, F parentheses A1 up to AN. Right. So this is going to be the smallest subfield of E containing uh, F and all the AIs. So the idea here is that we um, we take like we, we, we take F, we add all the IIs into that set, and then we grow it only as much as is necessary to create a new field, and then we stop. Right? Now, just a little note about this definition is the notation is awkwardly like weird, right? The, the notation is similar to uh, to saying like um, to the bracket notation and basically kind of means the same thing. Right, so we'll say basically they're equivalent. The reason for having this new notation is, that, is the definition is sort of officially different, right? Because in this case, we're like, so like look at an example, say um, something like, consider say the fact that Q is contained in oh, both of those are fields right so when we write q parentheses the square root of two right when we write this we mean the smallest subfield of r containing q and the square root of 2. When we write this, 
right, we officially mean the set of a plus b root 2s where a and b are in q. So officially those things are different. Right? Now it turns out these are actually the same. So in fact, um, in this case, this is because Q adjoined root two is clearly contained in this because you know if you're if you're if you're going to be a field containing Q and the square root of t square root of two or rather let me rephrase that the elements of the form a plus b root t root two are clearly going to be in the field containing Q and containing the square root of two and because it's contained within it. Right, we can just say that they're equal, right? right this is because um, we can say, and since Q root 2 is a field, um, let's say we have Q root, Q adjoined root 2 equal to Q parentheses root 2. So really, you can sort of think of them as the same, except in the second case in the parenthetical case we're just sort of making it clear that we grew the smaller field to create the the slightly bigger field so um now let me just give the theorem so and i'll sort of give an example if there's any confusion about this notation because i think um it's sort of sloppily presented by most books and also possibly by me and so I want to make sure that when we have an example that we really solidify it so that we understand exactly what happened and why the different notation and so on and so forth. So we'll say let F be a field. And F of X in F adjoin X be irreducible. So we're going to stick with irreducibles in this over F. And we'll say, if A is a root of f of x in, uh, let's say, some extension field E of f, then f parentheses A is isomorphic to f of x mod the ideal generated by f of x and moreover there's an additional thing that may also seem a bit confusing right now and that's okay moreover every element in the quotient ring or let's say every element in f a we can say it this way um, can be uniquely expressed form c n minus 1 uh, a to the n minus 1 plus down to c 1 a plus c 0 with this is with the c i's being in f now this proof I'm going to omit it's not hard really um, but check the notes if you're interested but really what I want to do is I want to do a solid example so we understand what the heck is going on here. At least a couple of examples so we understand what's being created in this case and what is isomorphic to what and what all this notation means. So for example, like uh, let's suppose that we start in Q of X. We look at the polynomial X squared plus 2. Now, we know that there is a larger field Q, that a, a larger field that Q is contained in. Right, we know that Q is contained in C, and we know that there is a root in C. So this has root square root of negative two in C. So what the theorem then says that if I take Q, or if I take the smallest possible field containing Q 
and the square root of negative two, right? So that's a subfield of the complex numbers. If I take the smallest possible field containing Q and the square root of two, this will be isomorphic to if I took Qx and modded it out by the quotient, and modded it out by the ideal. Don't forget the two in there. Now also, um, just so we're clear up here, this is irreducible over Q. So the theorem says that that just throwing in the square root of two and making it a field, sort of adding enough crap to make it a field, I will get something isomorphic to if I had done the fundamental theorem of field theory approach, right? Moreover, the second part of this, every element in this guy So the degree of our polynomial is x squared, right? So I, I was a bit sloppy over here in the theorem. Um, this n, this is where n is the degree of f. Sorry, sorry, forgot that. So in our case, we have degree two. So what we're saying is every element in q adjoined the square root of negative two looks like, in this case, we'll say a to the one I'll use the subscripts even though we could use different letters. Oh, sorry, c to c sub 1 times the square root of 2 plus c sub 0 with the c sub i's in q. Right, i.e., this thing is exactly the set of c1 root 2 plus c0 with c1, c0, and q. And we already know that this is q bracket square root of negative two by definition. So what this is saying is that all of these are exactly the same thing, right? Adjoining with the fundamental theorem of field theory, or, or rather, I'm using a fundamental theorem of field theory to build an extension field is uh, possible. And um, just adjoining a root that you have in a bigger field already and making the smallest possible field containing those will also work. So here are a couple more examples. So for example, um, f of x is x cubed minus five and q adjoined x. This is also irreducible over q. So again, we know that q, I'm gonna do this very similar to uh, to the previous example, sort of side by side, so we can see, we know that Q is contained in complex numbers. We know that X cubed minus five has a root. Actually, let's, uh, yeah, I guess we could do this in the reals as well, but it doesn't really matter. Let's say, um, yeah, let's um, let's trim it down a bit. It's not gonna change the outcome at all. So we know this, is, this has a root, cubed root of five in the reals. So the theorem says that if I take Q and I just throw in the cube root of five and make it a field, that I will get the same as if I did Q adjoined X mod the ideal generated by X cubed minus five. And it also says, moreover, every element in Q so this is a QQ, um, parentheses, cube root of five looks like, in our case, the degree is three, so we have to go up to the second power. So in other words, C2, cube root of five squared, plus C1, cube root of five, plus C0. This is with CIs being in Q. In other words, IE, Q adjoined the cube root a five is the set of things that look like this. And that would be the same as modding out by the ideal generated by that. Now for what it's worth, let me put in one more example at the bottom. It's really a non-example, actually, but it, it's good to mention, I want to have these all on the same page, is like, we cannot always do this.
So to think about why is, think about what we did in each of these cases, right? So in the first case, we had this statement, right? We have the fact that our field Q is a subfield of C already. And over here on the right-hand side, Q is a subfield of R. So, and in that bigger field, there's a root. And so it could be that we cannot do that, right? Like, um, right, to, to apply the theorem, we have to already know about a bigger field, or let's be official, about a field extension. Well, yeah. E in which there is a root. Right, without that, we can't do anything, right? For example, um, say f of x, if I tried this process in the case like um, x to the fifth plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 2, this is in z3, the joined x. Actually, let me, let me, I need something irreducible. Let me uh, backtrack on that one. Let me be really cautious, give a slightly different. This one came up earlier and I'm being a bit sloppy with it. So, um, x squared plus 1. This is in z3 adjoined x. This is irreducible over z3. We saw this before. Um, and then we start going. We know z3 and then we get stuck. Right, like we don't have an analogy to this, right? Like in the previous two examples, we knew about a bigger field already. And in that bigger field, there was a root. In this case, I don't know. Like, like this is why the, the original theorem, the theorem said you can extend it, um, you can, can create the quotient ring that's an extension field, is will always work. And this is just saying, if you do it the other way, you'd have got the same thing, you know, you get an isomorphic result anyway. But, uh, but fundamentally, it's different. So, um, yeah. So I, I blanked the screen off because I was about to begin the last part of the section, but I think I'm going to put the last part of the section into a separate file because this file's at 47 minutes already, which is fairly long. So the last thing I want to talk about is splitting fields, but I'll put that in a part B, and we'll call this part A.